have to bear with me a little bit. This is kind of a um, stepping out of my comfort zone. I, I had to step out of my comfort zone roughly about 12, 13 months ago where um, I don't know how to put it. I, I mean, the gray hair and the loss of hair and the, and the white, God didn't talk to me. I didn't see a burning bush or anything like that. It, it, he put it on my heart. He said, Harry, there's, there's businesses in Huron that are like-minded and they're not all, all necessarily Christian Reformed. There, there are actually other churches that have the right idea too. We all have interdenominational values and, and strengths and, and uh, traditions that we like to follow, but, but where the dime stops with, with CBMH and the, and the people that are attending it is that Christ is the everlasting Son of God. He died and purchased our lives for his life. And that's it. And we're not going to go any further to where the commas or the capitals or, the, or where the sentence structure goes with it all. And, and we, <clears throat> we've taken on a, a model that basically um, is talked in John 20, where uh, Christ appears to, to, uh, to his disciples and he, and he says, again, be, uh, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. CBMH, um, and, and PowerPoint is a new thing for me too, uh, we're a group of businesses. My name's on the first only because it happened to be there right at the start. Um, no other, other purpose. We've made partnerships with different churches and organizations as we've gone through. Um, we're working with the Huron County Food Bank Distribution Center at this point in time to assist them in their goals. Huron County Food Bank Distribution Center is the central location to where large amounts, tractor trailer amounts of foods are brought in and then it's further distributed amongst the other 13 food banks that are within Huron County. Um, you can see the list of people that we, we are working with, Nancy and, and Nancy Butter who is running Soup and More, which is a food kitchen that started off as a result of the Salvation Army fire in Clinton. Um, Deb has joined us. There's a number of people who have joined us. Both business operators and non-business operators are in our organization. We're not trying to create another church. We're not trying to create another place to donate. We're trying to be facilitators to make things happen within Huron County. God has charged us to go out there and actually do something, not talk about it all of the time. And he's charged us to do it with, with, the, pe with, with the weak and the meek and the people that can't afford to do so on, them, on their own. I, uh, I appreciate the partnerships, sh partnerships that we've, we've, we've started so far. We're, we're working with the food bank. We're working with the, both soup kitchens uh, in Brussels and in Huron. Community Webline has taken this on to give us a ad space and if you'd like to you can look us up on, on the internet through Community Webline um, and the Steve Green concert that's going to be kind of the tail end of this discussion to, to let you know where you can help us or where you can be part of it. <clears throat> our purpose is actually to share our businesses within the marketplace. Christianity isn't a Sunday thing. Christianity is a Sunday through Saturday thing. It works every day. And we, we need to display that in the marketplace. We can't just go to our individual churches and say we're going to celebrate God's gospel and we're going to talk about God's wonderful gifts just for that hour and a half and after we go home that's all over. That's, that's something we've got to change. It has to be on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday and a Friday as well. And it has to be with our employees and it has to be with our, the people that we do business with and the people that sell things to us. We have to do that from a Christian atmosphere, from a Christian faith and a Christian belief, trusting that in fact, my business, although <clears throat> I, uh, I took over my business originally from my father back who started in the 60s. I started with about 175 clients and currently we're up at around the five or 600. I, I've kind of lost count. It's just a mound of paperwork that continues to flow and more paperwork coming in and everybody has their little issues. And it's, it, it's changing. It's, it's, it's coming to the point where everybody is either new to the faith, hasn't started into the faith, they're seasoned in the faith. I probably am somewhere near the bottom of that. I'm, I wouldn't say I, I was born in a Christian Reformed background. I attended a Christian Reformed church. I did all the things that Christian Reformed people do or Christian people do. But my faith really took a real turn about a year and a half ago when, it said, when, when, when I had this, this, this feeling in my heart that 
you know what, there's other people like me that want to share that kind of thing. In my business, I, I, am, I, I am a trustee. I, I don't own it. I don't own the assets that I have. I don't own the people that I do business with. I don't own the computers and the calculators. They're all gods. He's entrusted me to take those assets and use it to the best of my ability and to share it back with my community. And that's what CDMH is all about. Uh, and with that, we started to put our faith into action. Rather than talk about it, rather than sit back and, and, and come up with ideas and never develop those ideas. And we realize that there's other organizations that are out there that don't have the ability to be able to throw it all together. And that's what we're there, there to do. We're facilitators to take those kind of ideas and move with them and, and, and make something out of them that, that are going to glorify God, that are going to help the meek and the poor and, 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 and the financially distraught. The people that are girding with their faith that are, that are uncomfortable. This past year has been difficult for me. I've lost family. I've lost friends. I've seen people with cancer pass, by the way. And, and you wonder, God, wow, you know, you, you're so powerful and you're so awesome. Why? why? And, and what I've discovered is that being a Christian isn't necessarily an exemption, a go, get out of jail free card or, or go directly to go and collect all up your cash. And it's none of that. It's, it's, yeah, you're going to have troubles and you're going to have trials and you're going to have frustrations, but I'm going to give you the strength and the power and the wisdom and I'm going to stand beside you all of the way through. Even when you doubt me, I'm going to stand beside you all of the way through and carry you through your burden. Uh, we're a body of believers that showing the entrepreneurial spirit, and Deb corrected me today, I guess there's no entrepreneurial spirit in, 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 in the Bible. Maybe, maybe we're not referring to a biblical character per se. We're actually saying that, that businesses have a different way of operating. Businesses are not necessarily 9 to 5. Their, their operators are up until 10, 11 o'clock at night trying to figure out what's going to happen in the next day and keep their staff motivated and going. And it's, it's trying to take that spirit in and the resources that, that all of the businesses in the area have and put them together and bring them into something dynamic that's for the better of, of, of this community and by the will of God. And, and it's often through his direction that we, we seek our guidance and leadership from. This, this past year, um, you can imagine, I, in my personal life, and I share that with your pastor, um, again, I was raised as, as a traditional Dutch Christian reformed boy that was going to marry the little blonde-haired girl with blue eyes and and, and was going to be from my Dutch background and know, knew how to make croquettes and nussy and all those wonderful things that we used to eat. And actually, I did marry that girl off, off the cuff. God's got a, a little bit of a sense of humor. I, I've never struggled with other religions or other faiths or anything like that personally. Like, I've never felt that anybody was on the wrong track or right track. In my family, he's brought in uh, uh, in-laws. And, and in-laws, for, for somebody at my age, that's... You, you worry about your kids, and, and so my first in-law was was a Jehovah Witness fellow from from Australia, which is far displaced. And my daughter was going to go down there and have two grandchildren with us, this man, and and has. Uh, and, and I sat there, and, and in the first four days of that having happened, I was I was terrified. I thought, Oh no, my daughter's going to knock on doors. Oh no, she's worried about whether it's a stake or if it's a cross. Oh no, they can't have birthday parties. Wow, there's all these things. Oh, no. You know what? I, I give credit to some of them in terms of how they operate because they're willing to go on doors and they're willing to knock and they're willing to have the doors shut on their faces. They're willing to go out and demonstrate in their hearts and in their love a story. The story might be a little bit twisted and some of the words might be in the wrong place. But at the end of the day, if they can accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, that he is the everlasting, eternal Son of God, and through him... He's purchased our sins and enters, gives us an opportunity to enter those gates of heaven. That's okay with me. I have to accept other faiths and other beliefs, and I have to trust them with my heart and love. If I do it with anger and frustration, I'm only going to make them depart and walk away. I can't do that. So then the second kick at the catch, he, uh, we ended up with a, a beautiful daughter-in-law and a grandson and a granddaughter that, that is Catholic. There again, you know, a friend of mine had asked me, um, what's the difference between Christian Reformed and Catholic? And I just kind of chuckled and I said, well, 
I think it's all about the intercessor thing. I think it has to do with we've got direct dial and you need to, to have somebody put you through. Aside from that, now yeah, we're pretty close. You know? And then he threw in a Zimbabwean a, a, a gentleman, um, lots of ethnic background. Um, he was a refugee out of Zimbabwe and he's Pentecostal. And okay, well, um, you know what, Lord, like, uh, yeah, you're teaching me a lesson. Through that lesson, I've learned that faith is important, trust in God is important, and religion means nothing. Religion is, is, is something that's inside a box and off to the side, and it means absolutely nothing. It's about your personal walk with God. And so our effort in this last year is trying to build community, trying to build fellowship, trying to build growth, and through that, we worship God in our own little ways, and we pray, and we, we talk about things that are internal, and we try to serve him in the ways that he would re request us to do so, whether it's helping the food bank, bringing Steve Green, who is a, a magnificent artist, into Huron County with all of those proceeds, going to help Huron County food banks. We're being challenged with more and more and more as we go, and every time it's... it's, it's you know, you know, you wonder whether or not you can take on that task, but it's an answer to a call, and people always step up. They always do. I'm trying to be the hands and feet of Christ. God says, I want to give you your inheritance. This, this, my little spin-off of this, this thing is, is you know, and, and again, I'm a tax guy, so you got to figure out that end a little bit, right? I just went through the whole RRSP season, and this is how much you don't have to give Caesar if you put that and that kind of thing. And we got TFSAs, and we got. My topic is 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 more so the spiritual RRSP. Right now, when you have that energy and that ability to be able to move forward, it it's the time and, and initiative that you need to put into that spiritual RRSP because at some point in time, you're going to need to make a draw. It's. God's beside you all the way and he's going to carry you, but you need fellowship. You need people to help you make that draw. And so the only way to have an RSP in place is to start stockpiling it, start putting it there. And fortunately in this past year, like I said, I've lost some loved ones. I've seen some people disappear out of my lives that I wonder why. And, and, and I wonder, you know, sometimes you can pray about it and that just seems not to be enough all of the time. Sometimes you have to pray about it, and sometimes you need a shoulder to cry on, and sometimes you need to, to, to have somebody that's going to lift you up and take you along that road. And so by building that spiritual RRSP, by entrusting your heart into others, and by helping them through their trials and, and tribulations that are going through, you can imagine those people are always more than willing to pick you up when you've fallen. And it's something that's tangible and you can see. So that's what that's all about. With respect to the food bank, and in the bottom line, it says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. It's a shock. You know, when CBMH started, I brought in a speaker from, from uh, World Vision who had worked in 52 different countries with all the terrible things that are happening in there. We also brought in a speaker from, from the international office of CBMH, which works in several other countries as well, and, and we see all the things that are happening there. In Canada, there's 867,948 people that are starving, that are using food banks on a regular basis. And if I went through all of the stats, you'd be appalled, because here in Huron County, a mere population of, I think it's 59,000 somewhere, 61,000, there's 1,200 people that use a food bank on, on a weekly basis. Of those percentages, there's 38% of those people that are under the age of 18. And, and at least 28% that have households that we haven't talked about that also have children in the breadbasket of Huron County. This last year, the food bank has done, it, it's been continuously uh, growing. It's been providing food, it's been providing water and drink, it's been providing things to, 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 to children with toys and Christmas gifts and, and, and things like that as well. They go outside of their scope and, and well beyond. Um, it, it, it's, we went through in Huron County alone close to 280,000 pounds of food out of the central distribution center. That doesn't include the local food banks that you've donated to or been part of. The distribution center takes in the larger, the larger tractor trailer loads of things. 
and distributes them amongst the 13 food banks within Huron County. God talks about, or Christ talks about, you know, I was a stranger and you invited me in. Everything we're doing is with, with the concept that even the smallest thing, even the, the, the smile that you offer, offer the lady at the checkout stand that says, I'll be with you today. I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. I love you. It, it doesn't have to be a whole sentence. It can be just a walk down the street where somebody's walking up and kind of glum and off the side, and you smile at them and you say, you know what? Today's a good day. Just something that's going to change them. It might not be that earth-shaking, phenomenal thing that looks like a miracle, but it is. It is a miracle. You're touching somebody's heart. They're knowing that, you know what? The world isn't that terrible of a place after all. We, again, we were talking about the food bank and the, and the need clothes and you clothes me. When the Salvation Army came together, so did Nancy Butter. And Nancy Butter started the, the soup kitchen on the basis of helping the people that were taking care of the fire and the flames that were down in Clinton that day. Uh, if you hear Nancy's story, it'll touch your heart. It'll touch it closely because it went from something that she was trying to do for a day to something that's done on a weekly basis. CBMH has in, entered into a partnership with them where we try to provide them not just supplies, but also our time to sit down with people and share God's word. And you're all welcome to come anytime. And Nancy would more than welcome anybody to sit down and share with these people. Uh, I was sick and you look after me. That's, that's a hard one for me this week. I have some friends that are sick. And my business has brought me to a point where... Uh, <clears throat> My hours are, are dedicated to business, and I don't think I'm pulling that weight well enough today. And so the best that I can do for them in this time, in my business busy time, is I can pray for them. And I pray for them when I'm on the road, when I'm driving, and I pray for them when I'm going to bed at night, and I pray for them on Monday and Tuesday and Saturday and Sunday, and, and I pray for them at 2 o'clock in the morning when I can't sleep because something's on my heart. I talk to them whenever I can, but... You know what? It's our job, whether, whether they're part of our church or denomination or part of our community or somebody that's actually 15, 20 miles away that you've never met in your entire life. God gave you health. God gave you strength. It's time to reach out to those people and do something about it. That's what CBMH is trying to do when it can. I was in prison and came to visit me. Well, I, you know, I haven't done that. I, I, I haven't gone to a prison, but I have to gone down to YFC, which is, is, is people that live on the street on a day-to-day -day basis. Part of the Steve Green concert that we're doing is we've given the talents of Steve, Steve Green by the compliments of CBMH uh, to YFC down in London. They're going to have a concert event down there as well. Um, and, and the purpose of that is to be able to help out people that are on the streets. And yes, you know, you know there's people down, down on the streets that are there out of choice. There's people that are there down on the streets because they have no choice. There's people that are down on the streets because they simply don't have anywhere else to go. They have no family. They have nobody to touch. And so there's prisons inside that aren't necessarily walls. They're not necessarily uh, bars. There's prisons inside where you just don't want to touch somebody. Where, where, where you've created a wall or a bar or, or a nest in front of you and you're not going to let anybody in to touch your heart. You've got you to go to the prisons. The prisons is, is going to, to the shut-ins, to the people that can't get out and do things. Basically summarizes it. Anytime you're doing anything for somebody that's walking down the street with that simple little smile... I had fun one day. I actually was in, in a Tim Hortons in the drive-thru, and I was, I was frustrated because the guy in front of me, man, he, he must have had an order that was going to take care of half a school. And I sat there, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And I got up to the thing, and I, I ordered my coffee and my donut. And Gary's done it as well, another member of our CBMH group. And I, I paid for it. She said, oh, sir, sir, I'm so sorry for the wait. And I said, well, you know, like... Uh, it would have been nice had he come into the walkout center rather than put through the drive through but that's all right. I understand. He's got a busy day. And while you're at it, just pay for the guy behind me because he looks rather grumpy. And so I did that, and I drove away. Now, I can imagine if the guy in front of me had paid for mine just because I had to wait, I could have understood. 
But honestly, I got through there really fast. And, and after that happened, after that moment happened, I never met this man. I never expect to see this man. Quite frankly, I didn't look at the license plate, and I don't know his car number. But I know that when he drove up and had his, had his coffee and his whatever he paid for, or got paid for, he probably sat back and said, do I know that guy? No. What's he want? What's he selling? When am I going to find him again? You know what? God's like that. He's not asking anything in, in exchange except for love, and he's asking you to go out and share his love. We've got to follow that example that Jesus Christ has given us. So why partner with us? Well, there's 280,000 reasons. There's 283,000 pounds of food that were distributed in Huron County food banks, and it's thanks to your generosity and people like you that we were able to accomplish that or that they were able to accomplish that. Their goals are climbing. Last year, there was over 18% more people using food banks across Canada than used it in 2009. And that need seems to be growing, and the recession isn't over. The recession's tough, and there's people that... If you, if, if you can imagine, of the 1,200 people that are using the food banks, I would, I'd be willing to say that there's likely another 800 or 900 people that, have, that would find it humiliating and are doing without and starving anyway. There's another bunch of people that can't make it to those food banks, that can't, can't go pick up that food. Our needs are great, and we need to continue trying to get that out to people because we're, we're living in it. In an amazing location. Uh, I don't know if any of you are farmers or have a farm background, but this past year, in Huron County or this this neck of the woods, yields were bumper yields. Average yields of 140 were seeing 210. Soybeans that were averaging 42 were seeing somewhere around 60 to 70, and they're starving food, starving people in our community. It's a shame. And so what CVMH is trying to do is it's trying to focus itself within Huron County. You can't forget your own backyard. I know that the, the problems that are happening in Japan are terrible. They're horrendous. And when we watch the things that happened in Haiti are awful. And, and the tribulation and, and the fights and the wars that are going on in Libya are also, also terrible. And we need to pray for that. We need to help them. And we need to do whatever we can in prayer. But at the same token, you can't neglect your own backyard. And that's what CDMH is about. It's taking after our own backyard. On uh, <clears throat> July 7th, 2011, CVMH is sponsoring Steve Green to come to Clinton, Ontario. You know, I've got a lot of clients that head from Orangeville down to Sarnia, down to London, the whole nine yards. When I tell them that Steve Green is coming to Clinton, Ontario, I get this strange look on their face. Clinton? What? Kitchener? London? What? Clinton? Yeah, and it's going to be done in a horse stall. No less. Uh, <clears throat> we're actually hoping to, to uh, have all of the churches join in on this with us. Um, this, this is a day where we're going to celebrate in song and in music, and we want everybody to come. There's not going to be tickets for sale. There's not going to be uh, anything that's going to guarantee you an entrance at that point in time, but what we're asking for people to bring... Uh, a bag of food, a donation, whatever. And 100% of those proceeds are all going to the food banks within Huron County. This concert obviously costs money, and the businesses in this neighborhood are contributing towards raising the funds to, to, to put this together. Um, expectations were seating for 2500 but then I had a client last night that came from Jarvis, and, and he said, 2500 what are you going to do? I said, what do you mean, what are you going to do? He says, well, if there's, what are you going to do with the surplus of people that are going to show up? And I'm going, okay, Lord, um, I guess that if I can open the doors on the one side and kind of, I don't know what we're going to do, but we'll see what happens. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see 7,500 people in Huron County praising God for one night? Just one night. As Christians united together in one night. Forget about denominations. Forget about Catholic, Pentecostal, Baptist, Christian Reform, the whole nine yards. Let's wash that away. Let's sing praises to God for God's greater glory for one night. And maybe we can stretch that into a second night another day, and maybe to a week, and maybe to a year, and maybe we can stand together as Christians and understand that God gave his Son, our everlasting Savior, to purchase our, our lives, to pay for the debts and the bad things we do. You know, I stand in front of you. I'm not a perfect guy. Quite frankly, when I look at my history and my life and where, where I've got to from this point on, and I, and I take a look at the Bible and the characters that are within that Bible, 
we actually did this at CBMH, and we asked everybody to, to, to pick out a Bible character that they most resembled. Mine was the sinner on the cross, because I know that tomorrow there's going to be something in my life that isn't quite right with God, and that when I get home tomorrow night, I need to go onto my knees, and I need to pray, and I need to ask for forgiveness every day and every morning. Steve Reen, it's going to be a wonderful thing. It's going to be wonderful to see Christians unite together for one day. Why a concert? We're going back to all the talks that we just discussed. Some of the members that are in CBMH uh, basically started their walk with God because of Christian music, because they listened to the words and it wasn't screaming, yelling, and carrying on. Music seems to warm the savage beast, and I guess that's the place where we need to start. We need to build home, we need to build family, we need to build community, and we're going to do it through music. We'll issue tax receipts for anybody that makes donations if they'd like a tax receipt. That's the accounting side of me rather than the, the guy that's standing up doing a religious thing. <clears throat> We're asking church sponsors to donate $500, and if they want, they can have a booth. They get 20 preferred seating for a private meeting with our private meeting. Anybody that, that is in the preferred seating area at that point in time will be able to have about a half hour one-on-one -on -one with the artist and ask any questions that you'd like to. Um, we're covering the costs of advertising and brochure and flyers to, to advertise who are our sponsors and and who is bringing this to town. Uh, we're going to give recognition to our sponsors, probably through PowerPoint, if I can figure out how to work it out properly. And we have people that are more talented in that than I am. That's not one of my gifts. Um, again, that the, the, the small businesses will get a tax receipt that they can use for their tax deduction all the way through. Uh, you can partner, become a member with us if you like. We charge $300 in the annual fee. Obviously, there's administrative costs all the way through that we have to do to get, get things done this past year. Um, we've been kind of flying, flying on the faith of God, and money's come in when we needed it, and it's been quite handily. Now we're starting to do that. We want to get a charitable organization number, and we want to make things happen. You can just be a private member, and that's only $100 a year. That it's We, we have... Uh, this past year we had, I think, 10 breakfast meetings, usually on Saturday mornings from about 7 o'clock till about 9, quarter after 9, 9.30. Sometimes we bring in speakers, sometimes it's just local testimonies and sharing. It's always good food, and anybody's welcome to attend. We pass the hat at the end of it to cover those costs. Um, I got ahead of myself. Networking, which... Maybe I should scratch that one off after the... <clears throat> Actually, our vision of networking is a little different. There are businesses that are new, there's businesses that are old, there's businesses that have been around for a while, and every business has had its struggles out through the course of time, whether, whether it's employee problems, whether it's government problems, whether it's financial issues. Um, th there's a greed side, there's a greed element, and the greed element is very simple, is, is that as a business, you can come to our businesses and open your heart, open your sharing, and other businesses will help you through your problems and trials and struggles. We're, we're people that are wanting to be part of each other's lives on a day-to-day -day basis, and in doing that, also being part of God's kingdom building here in Huron County today. We have the marketing and advertising on our website, which I mentioned before, which is through the R RBN network. Um, man, I guess I don't have it. What we're trying to do is we're not we're not trying to, to build God's kingdom all in one day, all of our by ourselves by one massive event that all of a sudden is going to be a, a running up to the stage and saying I dedicate my life to God. We're, we're we're trying to do it one soul at a time on a daily basis. We're trying to touch people's hearts every day, and that's right now. There's 35 businesses in that adventure, and we'd like to have 135 businesses in that adventure. There's more Christians in business than you'd like to believe. And we're all stewards of the assets that God owns. They're not ours. I'd like to thank you for the time that you've uh, given me on this. I, uh, I would encourage you, at least, please pray for our, our organization. Please help us out in that avenue. Help us find the problems that are within Huron County and the directions that, that God has desired for us. 
help us get through the growing pains. We're an infant organization, and we're just starting, and we're, we're, we're going through our, our steps to get from here to there. I'd like to thank you for today's, today's opportunity, inviting me to the church. And again, I apologize for not, not being more of a, a speaker type that gets up and does this kind of thing. Quite frankly, I'm the guy that sits behind the computer screen and just tells you what your tax burden is. That's it. Thank you very much, and if you'll pray with me for a minute, if we could. Heavenly Father God, we, we thank you for these people. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the heart and the soul and the mind that is within this church. Lord, we thank you for the many gifts you've given the people in this church and the businesses that surround it. Lord, we ask that you help us to touch the community and touch the people that are doing without and the people that just don't know your name yet or just are struggling with understanding what your name is. Lord, give us the guidance and the wisdom to be able to touch them in the way that they need to be touched, not in the way that we think they should be touched, but in the will of what you perceive them to need. Lord, help this church grow, help it to become vibrant, help it to be, to be something that, that the community reveres as being a walk with you. Help, help us be partners with these people in the, in the adventures that they're, they're about to partake on. Help them be the center of what you will for them on, on this earth. Give guidance and peace to those that are sick. Give guidance and peace to those that have suffered loss. Lord, be with those people that, that just don't know you yet and are just chomping at the bit to get the opportunity to be able to find you. All this we ask in Jesus' name alone. Amen.